there's something really cool that you can do with Bitcoin mining, and that's go into places where maybe industry has left them behind for one reason or another, and really rejuvenate that area, bring mm. new jobs, new education to those small places, make a big difference in people's lives. Hey folks, Flo here with Blockchain North, still at CBC's uh, fourth trade mission here in beautiful Calgary. You can see the backdrop behind me and that's why I'm wearing a cowboy hat. It is Stampede right now. I'm here with Mike Schindler of Sustainahash. Uh, Mike, would you like to just give us your sort of 30 seconds introduction, who you are and what Sustainahash does? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so um, my name is Mike Schindler. I'm CEO of Sustainahash Technologies, uh, co-founder. Uh, uh, my business partner's name is John. Um, we started this company in 2021. Okay. Um, but I've been mining since 2013. Mm -hmm. I started with uh, Litecoin on a GPU rig that I built in my parents' basement and uh, have been kind of following it since then. And got into mining more professionally 2021 and repair in 2022 and things have been going well since then. Okay, so OG 2013. I mean, I don't know what the exact date that. is for an OG, but that pretty much qualifies it. <laughs> it is interesting how in the Bitcoin mining space, there are quite a few folks who were kind of mining as a hobby, basically, and, and mm -hmm. you know, way before they, it, because is it fair to say that Bitcoin mining has become way more corporate than it was before? Way more I'd like so. heavy, like institutional, basically? I would say so. Um, in the beginning, it was, I mean, a hobby is all there was, right? Mm. It, it, it was just a bunch of dudes playing with computers, right? <laughs> and this funny internet money. Um, but now it's evolved into something that I think large business, institutional, and now governments mm -hmm. even recognize as a real asset. It has real value in, in many different ways. It can be used for many different things. So. I would say we're probably going towards a more corporate, institutionalized, big guys game um, in the future. For anyone who's looking at this video who knows little or even nothing about Bitcoin mining, if we could do this like sort of like a, you know, a YouTube short 30 seconds, like what would you list as the sort of three, max four, you know, benefits or use cases, let's say, of, of Bitcoin and, and Bitcoin mining? What would be the, the three first obvious things that come to your mind that people really need to know? That's a great question <laughs> and a tough one to answer because there are so many different things. <laughs> okay. I'll give you a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, like one, two, three, you know? I would say number one, the, the largest use case I see for Bitcoin is just the capacity it has for fast international large-scale transactions to take place. Mm -hmm. If you've ever done a transaction in Bitcoin uh, with somebody who's in a completely different country, different geographical area in the world, um, and you'll, you'll have realized that there's this really cool ability to send somebody money in a completely different banking system, completely different area, and they have it in an hour. Or less. Or less, I was going to yeah, say. In some yeah. cases, seconds, right? Um, really depends on what you're using. But I think just that alone is huge. Yeah. Uh, now, getting into the more technical, I guess, industrial applications, you have uh, Bitcoin mining as a great use for power grids. Mm -hmm. um, in Alberta, we're talking about using it, and, and we do use it for methane uh, emission reductions mm -hmm. on, uh, in the oil and gas field. That is really helpful because instead of just burning or releasing methane into the air, we can at least take that, put it through a controlled, regulated emissions process, and uh, really turn that into something useful. Generate right. value. Yeah, generate value. Okay, cool. And what would be a third a third use case then? So the first one was transactional. The second mm -hmm. one was more industrial. You mm -hmm. know, using emissions or waste energy and turning mm -hmm. it into value. Is there a third one that you know is very top of mind for you? That is important. There's something really cool that you can do with Bitcoin mining, and I think it does particularly well. And that's go into places of say the United States, Canada, other other areas of the world. We're seeing this in South America now as well where maybe industry has left them behind for one reason or another mm -hmm. and you can go into a town uh, or a small area and really rejuvenate that area bring mm. new jobs new education to those small pl small places make a big difference in people's lives i love that part about it that's my favorite part i, it can, I can tell that's the <laughs> it's, passion it's fun it's fun it really is fun being a big change in some people's lives 
that's a great segue for a question I sort of was trying to formulate, but you've helped me there. So I know, for instance, in Quebec, where I live, uh, that, uh, you know, a lot of companies and, and, and organizations are trying to advocate, you know, to try to lift that moratorium. And, yes. Yeah. And, and there are villages or towns, you know, usually a little remote, like most of Canada has remote areas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hard that, to not be. <laughs> yeah, that would probably want or benefit from mm -hmm. maybe the jobs, maybe the, you know, like the emissions uh, aspect, uh, the, yeah. the economic activity overall the, the dollars frankly yeah that that bitcoin mining could bring um so you have successfully built a bitcoin mining business here in alberta mm -hmm. um i know from talking to your colleague earlier that you guys are also expanding into texas um but based on what you just said about how happy it makes you to uh, in other words make other people happy mm -hmm. with bitcoin mining what kind of journey is that because you must be sometimes frankly banging your head against the wall like trying to convince <laughs> i mean here in alberta you have the more progressive most progressive yes government and, and regulators in, in canada and maybe some of in the world but mm -hmm. does it sometimes i mean yeah could you explain a little bit of that like what keeps you going and how hard is it to convince those communities that it's in their interest yeah i think there's an interview with Elon Musk where he says starting a business is like eating glass. And I, I say that's very apt. <laughs> eating glass. Yeah, it's tough sometimes. I mean, like you said, banging your head against the wall on some things that seem like they should be obvious or they should be just easy to do. And, and that isn't necessarily easy for us in this space to do. Like, for example, get a bank account mm. um, or uh, a line of credit or something like that, right? I just interviewed um, the rep from ATB who's on the, oh, good. Yeah. the ATB venture side, so it's yeah. a little different. But we do know that ATB is a friendly a friendly bank to us. They are, time. yeah. yeah. And we, we've had some conversations with them, very productive. And I'm, I'm hoping to work with them. Soon, so since you've been in the industry since 2013, mining since 20, what did you say, mm -hmm. 2019, I think? Uh, 2013 and then since 2021. Since 2021, more professionally, okay, so yeah. quite more recently, but, um, but, but you've been on this journey for a long time. Do you yes. somehow feel vindicated now that Bitcoin is more accepted than, certainly than it's ever been? And, and do you feel like we've seen a turning point in recent months with, you know, the, the of course, the ETFs in January, uh, you know, Trump, uh, like him or hate him, but, you know, saying I'm the Bitcoin president. I think he's actually going to be at a Bitcoin conference in, yes. in a few weeks. I just saw that pass by in the news. Mm -hmm. But there's clearly a change in narrative. I mean, do you feel like, is it like I told you so? Or is it more like I'm so glad you finally, you know, see what I see? Vindicated? Maybe a little bit. It's a little bit. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. I appreciate you being on that. But more so... It's, it's just a feeling of finally people are getting it, right? Yeah. Finally, yeah. something is happening at a large scale to turn this into an industry that can function in the normal world, I guess you could yeah. say, in the real world. Um, it's accepted by people now. I think the adoption rates are <clears throat> increasing rapidly like you said donald trump saying i'm the bitcoin president that's huge yeah. that's unheard of yeah and it I forces mean, the opposing party of course to like sort of react and also yeah. engage right yeah one of the most influential countries if not the most influential country in the world having a prime political candidate say hey this is what i stand by that's huge for bitcoin yeah that's never happened before so we're in a really kind of like you asked and a really interesting turning point for bitcoin as a thing uh, and that also as an industry mm -hmm. where, yeah, now we are seeing this institutional support. BlackRock, I mean, they, yeah. they, for all we know, they run the world. And now they have an ETF for, mm -hmm. for Bitcoin. That's crazy. And their founder, not their founder, but uh, their, their Larry Fink, their, their guru, you could say, yeah, for yeah. the financial industry through yeah. his letter that he sends in January mm -hmm. that everybody reads and, and, and clearly pays attention to. Uh, he has become an advocate, basically. And Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's huge. Right? You can't so, beat that. No, really you can't, can't. beat that. <laughs> um, why do you think it's so hard for people to see the light with Bitcoin? I mean, what, again, um, we could discuss this for a half an hour, just that. But oh, yeah. if you were to synthesize that again in a minute or two, like what, what do you think is the crux of the problem at the end of the day? It's an excellent question. I think it's a fairly novel concept. Decentralization is not something that people are used to. 15 years in, though. Yeah, I mean, some industries take 100 years to develop. Okay. I mean, it, it takes a long time for... But we live in a digital era, a globalized economy, where sure. we've seen things go from zero to 100, you know, that kind of hockey stick curve, which mm -hmm. Bitcoin has done too, by totally, the way, yeah. by dollar amounts and adoption mm -hmm. and so forth. But mm -hmm. I guess my question is, why do you think there's so much resistance to it? I think it scares some people. I think it scares in 
really shakes up the, I guess, institutions we have now as far as centralized banking and centralized control of uh, just society at large works. People aren't used to that. People aren't used to what Bitcoin brings to the table, which is it's just a digital asset that exists. Nobody controls it. Nobody really can control it. And it's going to just keep doing what it's doing. And that's a fairly novel concept for our world, I would mm. say. Well put. But that's really cool yeah. at the same time. That's very cool that it can just be. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and, and my hope is that, you know, we can be very hard on governments, regulators, banks, mm -hmm. whoever we want. But at the end of the day, all of these things are run by people. Yes. And once people individually start saying, that's really cool, then mm -hmm. I'm hoping that, you know, the ball just starts rolling, you know, and, and, and becomes unstoppable. But, exactly. Um, and one more note on that, I think yeah. a lot of the argument from people who are pushing back against it is, I can't touch it. It's not real. There's no inherent value behind it. Like, it's not a gold coin or something. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't have to be. Neither is all your data on, on the internet. And, and somebody getting your data on the internet can have a profound effect on your life. Mm. It reminds me of the Peter Schiff versus his son. I, don't, I forget his name, but mm -hmm. uh, his son is, I think, 18 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And Peter Schiff maybe in his late 60s. And respect to Peter Schiff. I mean, he's, uh, he's definitely a, a great thinker. And, uh, and gold, I mean, is still a very strong asset. But it's interesting to see that they're completely opposed on that. And I think that's... Yeah that shows that it's very generational it's kind well, of funny right? isn't it <laughs> yeah i mean if you're born with an ipad and and you know then then you know then anything digital is normal right Whereas exactly if you're not which i'm not even but mm -hmm. i'm lucky to still be kind of in between um, yeah. anyway um two last questions for you one is right. uh, why are you here why i mean you probably have a lot of work and you know a, a growing yeah. business and yeah. plans abroad and why was it important for you to be here perhaps not just one day but but several like what yeah well, I truly believe in the mission that CBC has, and I truly believe that we need to, as an industry, make sure that we're interacting in a positive way with our government, with our regulators, make sure they understand exactly what we're doing. Okay. Make sure they understand the technical aspects. That's mm. where someone like me comes in. I, I, I dig down on the technical aspects of mining all the time, uh, and that's what I know and love, but they don't get it. Right. At the end of the day, regulators doing their job and making sure that people don't get ripped off or mm -hmm. whatever they do. Right. Make sure that the environment stays green. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's our job to educate them and it's our job to work with them and set out guidelines and set out reasonable regulations for our industry that aren't going to discourage business and economic growth. At the end of the day, I employ people. My business employs people. That has a huge impact on just their families and, and the community as well that, that we work in. <clears throat> so any regulation or any rules that are set on my business or any business in this space has a profound impact on real people. And that, I think, telling that story is very important. Mm. Yeah, I love your going back to people time and time Always. again. That, that's clearly, clearly from the heart. Um, final question. You mentioned, um, this, you touched briefly on the sustainable aspect of what you do. And mm -hmm. of course, sustainability is in your name, or yes. I'm really illiterate, which is, also, <laughs> which is also very much a possibility after the last days we've had. Um, what, what does sustain hash exactly mean? Yeah, so sustain hash kind of came from the idea of not only just having a sustainable business in the environment and reducing the footprint of Bitcoin mining uh, in what we do in, as a repair uh, shop. Mm -hmm. Mostly sustainability in business itself and sustainability in relationships. Uh, that's super important. I've been ripped off in this space. Like I said, been in it since 2013. I've been scammed. Everybody has, right? Yeah. Everyone has a story of somebody who's run off with money that they thought they were getting ASICs in exchange for. Um, so in my mind, it's why can't we have a vendor or a trustworthy person to go to or business to go to, well, just like in any other industry, to get things fixed, buy new equipment, uh, get advice even, uh, or have somebody to talk to who's in the space all day, every day. There should be somebody who does that, and that, I figure, why not us? We can do it. <laughs> I love it. What a great way to end an interview. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. your time, Mike. Appreciate your time. Yeah, for sure.